Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 27 of the Shard Shooters Podcast. And I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Shaw, aka Mr. B Sharp on the ones and twos, and the threes and the fours and the fives and the six. All that good stuff. I'm in the house with some of my players tonight, some of my dogs, just some faces that you already know. My main man, Josh, up in the building this week. What up, player? What's up, man? Great to be back. Oh, yeah. Then got my main man, Terrence, in here. What's the deal, man? Good to be here. Good to be here always. Oh, yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, we should have it, – it's it's going to be some new, new faces coming on next week. They want to be some uh, guests. So y'all be on the lookout for next week. We're going to have some fresh faces. Just wanted to uh, show love to the podcast. Uh, Arlon, uh, Quint, and the Haven could make it tonight. So all three of them talk bad about them, ladies and gentlemen. Talk bad about them. They couldn't be here tonight. That's so lame. But it's all good, man. It's all love. Shout out to them boys. But we're going to continue on with the show. You already know. We're going to kick it off with the NFL Combine Recap. And history was made this past weekend, ladies and gentlemen, from a Texas Longhorn, which I'm kind of surprised the Haven ain't on for this week. Xavier Worthy running a 4-2-1, beating uh, – what's Ross first? Man, I forgot it just that quick. Justin. Justin Ooh, Ross. Justin. Is it Justin Ross? Uh, if, if we got it wrong, we're we, we going to fix it. But uh, Justin Ross, um, um, 4-2-2. And I figured he was going to run pretty fast. Man, but four to one is John Ross. Thank you, man. Thank you. We thank you, John Ross. <laughs> uh, four two two. But um, man, running a four two one is pretty impressive. I was uh, I think that's pretty much the biggest story to come out of this. Uh, because you had uh Caleb Williams and all them, which probably y'all may talk about. But Xavier Worthy definitely uh, helped helped himself out. Probably uh, put himself in the uh, first round if he wasn't already in the first round. And another one that I uh, truly love, my dog from Alabama, <coughs> Dallas Turner, just just went ballistic, man. man just the the speed, the vertical, the field drills, just did everything. Possibly in the Atlanta Falcon. So, ain't no telling, man. But what were y'all guys' thoughts on the combine? Yeah, man. Um, I watched it um, pretty heavily on Saturday. I saw the um, Xavier Worthy run live. I was pretty amazed. <laughs> um, but um, he definitely stood out to me. Um but we'll see how much that produces because we know John Ross really has not uh, produced a lot in the NFL touchdown wise and just yards wise. He's very fast, but it didn't really do much um, for Cincinnati and, and, and things of that nature. So, uh, you know, I hope that's not true with Xavier. Hope he does uh, different. But the other standout for me was definitely Michael Penix Jr. Um, from Washington. I mean, the accuracy of his of this guy is absolutely amazing pinpoint right on i mean he's left-handed and so that already gives him an advantage because now um defenses have to adjust um to his throwing side versus him throwing across his body uh because usually left-handed quarterbacks are going to roll out to the left like mike used to do um and so i mean yeah the his i i think I just don't – even if Caleb would have thrown, he didn't throw on Saturday, but even if he would have thrown, I don't think he would have been more accurate than Michael Pence Jr. It's just – I mean, because you, you're talking about some accuracy we haven't not seen in a long time. <clears throat> Definitely coming from a left-handed quarterback, um, but just in general. And so deep throw accuracy, throwing those cross – throwing those crossing routes, throwing the whip route, 
throwing the corner around. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised if he moves up even higher on boards. Already have him being a top 10 pick. Wouldn't be surprised if he moves up possibly to top five. I know Caleb Williams. I know Jaden Daniels and athleticism that they possess. But I, if you need a pure passer, <clears throat> a pure passer who can put put the ball anywhere you want you want to, I would definitely go Michael Penix if I'm an uh, if I'm an owner uh, or if I'm a GM. Uh, so um, he, he he was really the other guy that stood out to me this past week. Yeah. So uh, with the combine. Couple standouts, of course. Uh, Got to give it up to Xavier Worthy. Uh, 4-2-1 with the official record now. He holds it. Um, that was really impressive. Coming out of Texas, uh, we saw that speed all year. All year, if you watched this guy, you knew uh, that he's got some absolute burners. Uh, also impressive coming out of Texas was uh, – What's his name? Uh, Mitchell. I can't pronounce the first name. Is it Adonai? Adonai. 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 Yeah, Adonai yeah, Mitchell. Pretty much AD. AD Mitchell. Yeah. Yeah, AD Mitchell. Yeah. A uh, big receiver. Big receiver. Uh, and I might put you in the mold mind of Matt <coughs> uh, coming out running a, a four, four, three, four. Uh, so a guy that big running that fast, that's an absolute problem. Um like you, I you know, um previous podcasts I said that that Penix had the most of game, especially with um a, a lot of the quarterbacks not participating. Uh Penix looked great. Penix looked great. I think he did a lot for his draft stop. Um I'd be surprised if um uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, gets the nod in front of um some of the quarterbacks that they got slated in front of him just based off that performance. Um uh, and uh one guy that I kind of doubted in the uh as a quarterback but had an impressive combine from the quarterback position was uh JJ McCarty. Like man he looked great. I, I can't even be mad. Like and, and I was I'd be the first to tell you I was very, very skeptical about this guy. Uh I didn't know that he had a skill set like that, mainly because, you know, Michigan runs the ball a lot. He doesn't get a lot of opportunities. He didn't get a lot of opportunities to show off uh, his skill set like that. But, uh, man, he looked good in the combine. Um, let's see. I got to also give a shout-out to my Auburn Tigers uh, that that put up big numbers in the combine, uh, mainly from – the defensive back position, you had uh, – let's see. I had it pulled up, actually. But I know uh, Miyamar Pritchett, I think he ran like a 4-3-6, in which I didn't, I didn't think he was uh, – well, I knew he was fast, but I didn't know he would run the fastest time. Um, and then uh, Simpson. Simpson had a great combine, man. Uh, Ran a little average 40 at like four, four or five, but from a safety spot. And I mean, if you, we all seen his ability to cover man to man. There's a form of corner shifting the safety. Uh, DJ James had a good, ran a good time, I think, in the four threes. So, uh, shout out to those guys, man, for really, uh, up in their draft stop. Um, and that that was about it, man. And I do I, I I gotta give it up to Dallas Turner too, man. Just being that big, man. I had I had no idea to do it that fast. I mean, you don't get to see it. It's not forty yards to the quarterback, so you you don't you don't really get to see linebackers uh, open up like that. Uh, pause, <laughs> but uh, you you just don't get to see it uh, on the football field. Uh, but yeah, this dude is. Extremely talented, uh, like Brinsky said, at forty, the uh, high jump, uh, he, he he performed, man. At that size, he's gonna be a problem uh, in this draft. Whoever looks up and get him, yeah, man. Now he was already a problem uh, at Alabama, but put him on the wrong team, man. It can get ugly. 
<laughs> you put him on the wrong team, especially if you're pairing him up with somebody. But he he's not lasting out the uh, top ten. So if you uh-huh. if uh, I know a team that possibly could have used him, well they got high tower, but the Steelers could have used him. On one night with him and T.J. Watt going after the quarterback, that's something scary. But yeah. hey. I, I did love Michael Penix, uh, uh his uh, combine, but it wasn't nothing shocking about it because I already knew how good Michael Penix was. Mm-hmm. Shout out to one of the couple guys, which is Michael Penix. But uh, it, it nothing what he does surprises me. It just only thing that surprises me when they put JJ McCarthy and Bo Nix ahead of him. The only thing mm-hmm. that you could possibly put a put these guys ahead of him is because maybe the health, the uh, right. the whole medical concern. That is it. Outside of that, what, what are, are we watching the same games? <laughs> I'm not saying J.J. Yeah. McCarthy is a scrub, but they just – I just don't like how they just hyping it. They were like, if J.J. McCarthy played for LSU – I think that was Mike Tannenbaum, former uh, NFL uh, GM, when he said if J.J. McCarthy played for LSU, he'll put up the same numbers. And I said this is a reason why he's not an NFL GM no more. <laughs> that, that is the main reason because he's been saying some crazy stuff like all offseason, bro. I don't know what's wrong with this dude, but it just – it makes sense why he's not an NFL GM because I said, bro, this is why you're fired. <laughs> this is why you were working on ESPN talking about these crazy scenarios. Cause if you would have done that, the fan base would have ran you out of town <laughs> quicker. So. I just don't know, man. Yeah. It's just some of these dudes. I don't know. What what do you think about the ones that didn't participate, like Caleb Williams? I I think I mean I know Caleb Williams, man. He's creating a lot of hype for himself, man. Man, to live up to all all this stuff is just voluntary. Yeah, Yeah, bro. He this is not mandatory for him to do anything. I'm like, yeah, they want him. If he doesn't want to take a let's let's use for example the Steelers. If he doesn't want to meet with the Steelers, the only way I say it would be cool if he meet with the Steelers is they're going to trade up and get him. But they're not going to do that. Why am mm-hmm. I talking to you? There's no point of talking to you. We're just wasting time just talking to each other. I'm The man is not going to last past the uh, second pick in the draft. We all know that. Yeah. If Chicago he- doesn't pick him, guess what? Washington going to pick him. He's and not being then, humble about it at all, though. Like, I wouldn't give – like, why? Because he's confident? I, I didn't see nothing that he did it was, like, disrespectful. He just, like uh, – No, nah, no, nah, I, I wouldn't say it was disrespectful. I'm just saying, like – I ask you, what what, he, what did he, he do? He's putting a lot of pressure. He's putting a lot of pressure on himself. Well, I, I, I just think – like, of course I want him to go out there and compete, but he don't want to. He just don't want to. Like, Drake May did the same thing. Only thing that Drake yeah. May did that he didn't do, if I'm not mistaken, was just the medical. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. why Drake May is not being considered like that? I'm like, bro, I don't have to meet with y'all. I'm not going to go pen. Because we are, we already know Drake May is overrated. Yeah, big time. <laughs> that's why. That's why. So why are we getting that? And, but yeah. that, that's what I'm saying. But why are we giving Jaden Daniels a hard time just because he don't want to? Uh, yeah, you Kelly Williams. Well, who did I say? Jay Daniel. Yeah, I said Jay Daniel. My fault. Caleb Williams. Why are we why are we giving him a, a hard time? Because he doesn't want to meet with certain teams. I'm like, unless you're literally going to trade up to Atlanta, he can talk to Atlanta because Atlanta can possibly trade up to the number one pick to get him. That's some understandable. You just like I right, run and uh do all this stuff and my pro day. I think it's just because people never seen a, a quarterback just come out and say it like that. Like, nah, I'm not doing the medical. You know, if you ain't got no 
no plans of drafting me. Why would I do it? And we know that's the sentiment, but we've never heard like a player just actually come out and just say it. Man, they they just they just mad because the man just chose not. I, a confident black man, bro, is like, I don't know. It feels like you just too high. We got to bring you down. I don't know what's up with that, man. It's just like the same thing with Prime. Like, Prime talks like he's confident. They just call it cocky. I'm like, bro, if I'm confident in doing something, it's like me and you play the game. I know I'm about to whoop your ass <laughs> on this man. No, no, you don't. <laughs> And I'm like, but you're going to say you cocky. I'm like, no, I know my abilities. I know you about to score at most probably seven points. If that, maybe just three. And I'm about to score 44. I mean, I'll I'm tell you what, like, Let me ask you this, because you're the only one, you're the only one I know that has a team that's up in, you know, in the top five to just be able to get one of these quarterbacks. We Now, we all know that. You made it very clear you want Jay Daniels. <laughs> I think on the record. Who's your second option? Is it is it Caleb Williams? Well, Kevin's gonna be gone. If I had a second, if I had a second option. I mean in a perfect world, I, you know, I, I don't want around. Drake May. I, I just don't think Drake May is a fit. Now, we draft Drake May. I hope he becomes a Hall of Fame quarterback. Anybody <laughs> I want, anybody that comes to us, I want them to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. But if we had a second option, I'd be like, okay, if we're not going to draft uh, Jaden Daniels, and right. I think they're going to draft Drake, uh, Drake May, trade the pick, go lower, get more picks, and go get like a Michael Penix, but get extra picks. It's true. That would be smart. that's how I feel about it. But the my team that pissed pissed me off all offseason, dog. They haven't done <laughs> nothing that I wanted them to do all offseason. It's been recorded on this pod. I have yet to like make a big smile outside of us having the number two pick this whole offseason. So they don't draft Jay gotcha. Daniels. Huh? Josh, your team up there too, right? Like y'all can possibly yeah. move up in there. Yeah, yeah. What, no, what, what you say? Well, even before that, I want Justin, but because right. old behind 1920s owners think they thinking about getting Kirk Cousins, they would, just that's just stupid. <laughs> it makes me mad. But anyway, I love uh, ride, man. Yeah, that would that would be stupid. Uh, I would I would want uh, Jaden Daniels. So Caleb's gonna be gone. So I would take Jaden Daniels. If I can't get Jaden Daniels, I'd rather have Michael Penix Jr. If I can't get him, <clears throat> I actually just thought about this. And I think he's kind of slept on Joe Milton from Tennessee. I wouldn't mind him. Uh, now I know he had a rather impressive combine too. Man. You watched the yeah. combine, and then that's why you said that. I wish you was on last week, and you said that, and then. If you said that and then he put on the performance, then I believe you. But is that that's that combine getting to you, dog? Don't let that combine. <laughs> well, get you. Not just a combine. I think he did decently during the season too. Uh, I mean, I know he, he, he they lost to Alabama. We you know Georgia, we beat them as well. But I mean, the I, the, the oh, his arm is amazing. He can throw oh, yeah. a football we, ninety we, yards. But that's we, the thing. We've always known he had that though. Yeah, but we need yeah. to do yeah. The, yeah, read the defense, you know, yeah. All that we need the intermediate passes and stuff like that. Anybody can just chunk it down now, and he can yeah. uh do it with the best of them. And he probably had the highlight of all of them when he uh oh, yeah. guy of course they were just bombing it and he waited. It was like, oh, he waited and just dumped it off and then laid it right in the bread basket and right before it went down, like like yeah. he did a shot. I don't know, like, oh, that's cold. Now, that was cold. He's yeah. tough. And He's tough. I was one of the ones before the season started for college. I was like, I feel like Joe Milton has a big chance of doing something this year and uh, raising his draft stock and even would have been a big part of trying to make a Heisman run and all that. But mm-hmm. he let me down hard, Pauls, this uh, season. So – I don't know, man. If you, I don't know. 
I'm just not letting the combine get to me because it's the combine. You can get lost. The film don't lie, man. What did the film <laughs> say? It's not an exact science, man, because I don't know. If you look at Tom Brady's uh, combine, it was god awful. It was probably one of the worst of the worst. <laughs> yeah. And we see what that turned into. And I've seen some of the guys had some of the best combine, like uh, I think it was Jamarcus Russell, who had the best one of the best pro days that anybody said they ever seen. And we see how that turned out. So it's not exact science, man. I think the only thing we can't measure is this, your heart. Do you want it? On top of the talent and all that. So we'll see, man. It's gonna be an interesting process. Yeah. It, and I make it's always with, with so many quarterbacks in the draft, it's always gonna be a quarterback that uh end up in a great position. Like one of those late round quarterbacks. That's why the longer Michael Penix stay on the board, the better it is for him. You can possibly get a Michael Penix with a team that's already got some pieces in play. Uh, man, you, you, you got yourself some, you know. I mean, it worked out for Brock Purdy. You know? mm -hmm. and of course, injuries had to happen for him to get on the field. But because he was a late pick, the latest pick, he ended up going to a team that's already got the pieces in play. Uh, so don't be surprised. I'm just saying, don't be surprised if you see somebody like a McCarty or even even a Bo Nix end up in a situation where they're on a pretty decent team and they get an opportunity to come in and perform, and uh, they look pretty decent. Yeah, man. A lot Especially of with all the quarterbacks. My fault. Yeah. No. Nah, yeah, man. A lot of this just luck. Sometimes, like, yeah. like you just you may have the ability, like. If just say if Drew Blesso never got hurt, will we ever know who Tom Brady is? That's true. You know, I like mm -hmm. man. Now a lot. It, it sometimes just take luck, man. Like like and, CJ and, tried and, and Bryce Young. I oh, think man. if you flip the two, they would have the opposite. They would have each other seasons. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You be seeing all balling out in the Texas, and you be seeing CJ struggling with the Panthers. And like he's saying, hiking, he can barely hold on to the ball <laughs> long enough to see he was dropping the ball and all that. Hey, man, don't even get me started with that. Well, since we're speaking on all that type stuff, NFL free agency. But one of the most wonderful times of the year, that's when the, like the uh, NFL guys say the uh, new uh, football year kicks off and it's going to kick off March 11 when free agency start. So the thing is with this, we had a lot of guys released. We got a lot of guys about to be uh, testing the market and it's going to be more guys getting released. But the latest as of right now that some of the big names is Russell Wilson as a free agent, uh, Jamal Adams, Oh, Mike Evans just signed his two-year deal. So I know the Haven hurt, and I'm glad he ain't uh, going to the testing. But they, they said the testing wasn't even going to pursue him anyway, which I thought was kind of crazy to me. But uh, where do you guys see uh, like some of these guys going? Like even you want to speak on runs, you really speak on anything. But where do you see some of these guys going? See, honestly, Jamal Adams re-signing with the uh, Seahawks. I don't see him going anywhere with that. Uh, and I no, see but they Parker. released him. Yeah, but you can always re-sign him back. I, I don't see it. My fault. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, cool. we did. We did the same thing with John New Smith, but they said it's most likely that we're gonna re-sign him back um, at tight end. And so you know, it 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 you know it gets hairy with that because some teams, yeah, they released them and um, to free up cap space. But then they go get them back, or you know, and they just they just um, sign them to less, or sign them to more, or <clears throat> they release them and the player goes to another team. And so, um, you know, as far as Russell Wilson to start with him, um, I mean, it, it is some teams that need some quarterbacks. Of course, as a Falcon fan myself, he's my last resort. I don't 
Um, he's old. But if we can't get any of the quarterbacks I just named previously in the last little segment, um, then he'll be my last resort. I would want him before Kirk Cousins because at least he's healthy. Um, at least he's not coming off a torn Achilles like Kirk Cousins. Um, <laughs> but realistically, I mean, the Broncos, are out there, I guess they're going to have to draft them a quarterback. Uh, realistically, Russell Wilson, I would say I see him with like a um, – I wouldn't be shocked if he and I, I hope it wouldn't happen. I see him honestly in the back of a role, but in New Orleans or um, you know, maybe in New York, the New York Giants in the back of a role. I don't really see him starting anymore, to be honest. Um, unless a team is just super desperate, desperate. Um, you know, I I know you're a Washington Commander fan, Brisky. <laughs> And so I, I don't know if you, you know what I'm saying, maybe like him over Howell or maybe you just want to have him on the bench, you know, kind of helping Howell out, you know, hey, see Russell. Russell Wilson. He, yeah, don't want Russell. To, he don't even want Howell. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. don't, 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 don't even mention Russell Wilson on the commanders. We don't want him. <laughs> we don't need him. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, it's backup roles with those teams. Um, I said, I don't really see them starting. I think, you know, the quarterback class that being so enormous this year that's coming out, he'll, he'll, he'll find himself, uh, he'll find it being hard to find himself a, a starting role on any team, to be honest. Um, and so, um, hey, even, well, Seattle, no, I doubt he goes back to Seattle to, be a backup uh, quarterback there because you know he's already burned those bridges in my opinion. But uh, but yeah, man. So backup in those teams, and we'll see where that goes. Jamal Adams, <clears throat> if he doesn't resign, I see him um, going to going to uh, the NS the NFC. Uh, well, staying in the NFC rather. Um, and I know there's a 49er fan. So I mean, Tez is a 49er fan, and so. I mean, that would be tough because I think he would come at a high price. But if they got Jamal Adams, um, I mean, that would be that would be real tough. So if he stays in the NFC West and goes to the 49ers, I mean, look out there. They're, they're, to me, they should be the favorites. The only other team I see him possibly going to is the Eagles because they just let go of Bayard. Um, Bayard was released. And so, like I said, I think he would stay in the NFC. Um, and I think that would be good for him. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm an NFC guy, still a Falcon fan, but, um, you know, the NFC, um, definitely the defense in the NFC has picked up year by year. So, yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, of course, the Russell Wilson news is out there. He's he's released. Uh, I, I think he's going to be – I think he's – it's gonna be difficult for him to find a job, man. Uh, just because he's a he's a celebrity quarterback. He's not mm-hmm. just a good quarterback. You know what I mean? Like he's a celebrity quarterback, and he's gonna come at a price tag, and it's gonna be at a price tag that you're not gonna want to put on the bench. You know what I mean? And I don't know if he even in his head can grasp the fact that I'm a bench player now. Um, so I think it's probably up to him if he's willing to probably take a pay cut, if he's willing to, um, come off the bench, then it may be a spot for him. But a lot of times when you see celebrity quarterbacks, um, uh, teams, if they, if they, if they don't have a starting position, they just don't draft them. We can, we can count them, you know, all the celebrity quarterbacks that are just out of the league now. Um. Um. What so yeah, say? I don't know. I don't. Go so, ahead, my fault. Go no, down. No, go ahead. I asked you after this. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. I don't. I don't see a team. Uh. It's 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 it's, it's all about how you leave a place, right? This 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 play this this stint in Denver was just like a complete disaster. He was overpaid. He underperformed. Uh, I knew it was a bad idea when he first got there, and they said they gave him an office. <laughs> it's like that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Uh, 
And then the fact that when they was when they was losing, and he just ended every interview with "Let's Ride," and the fans just hated it. <laughs> it was no country. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's how you leave a place, man. And I think he just, you know, just like if you just walk off your job and don't give two week notice, it's gonna be that next job is gonna look at it and be like, you know, you just walked out the building, and left the keys right there. Oh, all right, yeah, next. So I think it's gonna be a lot of that going on. Um outside of that in free agency, of course, you know, Kirk, Kirk Cousins, we talked about it out off there. Kirk Cousins is finna get another bag. Is just, just what he do. Uh somebody's gonna give him a lot of money to put up a lot of numbers to make it to the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what team that is. It, it should be interesting this year with it being so many quarterbacks in the draft and a lot of quarterback movement. Um, outside of the quarterbacks, I'm interested in the running back position, actually. I want to see if Derrick Henry makes it to Baltimore. If that happens, league, look out. Uh, you got Saquon Barkley possibly going to the Texans. Uh, rumored at a couple of places, but – if he makes it to the Texans, you know, that's going to be big for them down there. Look out. Got a nice young quarterback. You already got a good running back. And then you add a Saquon Barkley, who's elite, and he's versatile. Um, one to watch out for is Austin Eckler, I think. He's out there. Now, this is a guy who, man, he, he can get on the team and – the, the good thing about him is you don't have to move your running back room around a lot. He does things so much differently than a traditional runner. Um, catches the ball out of the backfield like a receiver. So uh, Austin Eckler, um, I don't know who he's rumored to go into. Uh, I can see him landing somewhere maybe like Dallas with them trying to move on from Tony Pollard. Uh, somewhere like that. I'm not sure. But I'm interested in the running back position. Um, a couple of the receivers out there, I'm really interested in Ridley. You know what I mean? Uh, he's, he's a guy, depending on what team he go to, he can be a number one receiver or a number three receiver. It just depends on where he lands. But he ain't being no number three, three receiver. Number three. He is not. Just saying, stop, stop the cap. He ain't no number if, three nowhere. <laughs> if Calvin Ridley is your number three receiver, you, he ain't going to be no number three nowhere. Where he going to land at and be number three at? In the Chargers. Yeah, the Chargers maybe. You got what, Kenya Island, Mike Williams. Mike Williams. They, they stay he hurt so much. Oh, he probably man. eventually be number one. What if, what if, what if, uh, ain't did, uh three, no one. did the Bengals retain T. Higgins? Yeah, but he ain't going there. Yeah, I was in the 49ers that one. He wouldn't be a number three receiver. He would be a three with 49ers. He'd be a number yeah. one. It'd be he different goes, though, because, because, because you can't even put D. You in just trying to have wrong. a good season. I, well, I let me let me rewind. I you been having good season, but it was like a, a breakout year for him, like season wise. He always yeah. been a good wide receiver. So let me take that back. Yeah. Shout out to Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. And of course, yeah. Jamal Adams, man. I want to see him make it to the 49ers, or you just said they released Bird, he could come. Uh, we'll have Hufunga back at free safety. Uh, got another safety spot open. <laughs> we can add Jamal Adams in there. That'd be great. But then, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Crazy. Man, listen here. I'm telling you right now. Russell Wilson. <laughs> uh, he, could, he could probably start somewhere. I'm just can't think of it off the top of my head, hopefully, before we move on. But I'm just not willing to – I don't know, man. He's like he – the one thing that I hate when you critique Russell Wilson, and this is what I absolutely hate, it mainly be, be women, when you just like – I'm literally talking about the man uh, as a quarterback. Well, he's a great father. He's a great husband. Bro, I'm literally just talking about this man mm -hmm. as a quarterback in the NFL. I don't care about no future, and I don't care about no Sierra. I don't care about none of that. Them folks don't know me. So I'm talking about the man's ability. Well, he made more money than you. Well, 
Duh. <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's like so. the oh, I, boy, if he make my money, he <laughs> in the words of Charles Barkley, if I made Kenny money, I'd kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, oh, man. No, man. It, I just don't see it, dog. That's why I kept saying Pete Carroll deserves coach of the year every year for what he has. That man literally hid this man for years. I don't know what it was. And it just like time he leaves, it's just like, where, where you at? Because they weren't going to pay him in Seattle. I'm trying to figure out what made uh, Denver just be like, you know what? We're going to sign you to this big old contract. Whoever signed off on that, well, um, old ownership sold it to the old Waltons. Shout out to Walmart. Let's talk. Let's talk some deals. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, sold it to them. So they basically inherit that Russell Wilson contract. I don't think they would have. Uh, as smart as that family is, I don't think they would have signed them to that type of deal. But Jamal Adams is intriguing. Calvin Ridley is one. I think Calvin will either stay in Jacksonville or possibly go to the Panthers. I can see Jamal Adams possibly going to the Steelers. Possibly. Going to the Steelers. Him and Minka back there. That would be dangerous. <laughs> very, very dangerous, especially if he signed low or if he goes back to the Jets. That can be like that. dangerous too, with yeah, everybody true. being healthy and all that. The Jets was gonna be a pretty big team, man. And it's still kind of sad to even see, like, literally on the first play, Aaron Rodgers get hurt, and you knew where the yeah. season was gonna go at that moment. So it's different when hey, you got that's a another. We we was talking about combine earlier. That's another quarterback that that uh, Zach Wilson. I don't know if you remember his combine, but he was amazing. Like he mm -hmm. made some throws in the combine. He was just like, man, I never seen nobody do that. Just eighty oh yards God. against the grain, just bombed it, and then you get to the NFL. And it's like, yeah, them live bullets, something different. <laughs> that why that why you gotta just blank out there, bro. And I swear, bro, they just forget about the combine. Like, oh my God, did you see that throw? I was like, man, it's not, it's not a 6'5", 260 uh, edge rusher coming off to knock your head off when you're making That's these true. throws. Of course, anybody that make these throws look good, but it's different when somebody putting that pressure to you. You only got three seconds to react, and then you got a cornerback right there. Then it may be a defensive tackle uh, – Oh, uh, bull rushing your center, <laughs> like man, it's so many factors, and uh, I don't, I don't get caught up in the um, combine. I just think it's just something entertaining for us to see. Like it's good to see like the forty times, cool. But even when you see guys forty times, I'm like bro, I don't even care about that. I like bro, just look at the film. Some dudes just look different when they have the football in their hand. Like they said, Jerry Rice ain't running fast at his combine. Look what Jerry Rice type of career he did. Yeah. Ed Reed, if I'm not mistaken, go ahead. Well, Ed Reed had a uh, four, four five, almost like a four six. And the man is literally the greatest safety to ever live. That stuff doesn't matter, man. So that just let me know. Thank God, Ed Reed didn't have a four three speed. It'd be yeah. more dangerous. One one of so, the best quotes was um I, I remember from the quant combine was Terrell Sub. He ran like in the 40. It was close to a five. I want to say it was like a four eight, four nine. And they asked him about it, and it was like, you know, that was a poor time. How do you feel about that? And he was like, I don't care. I ain't never ran 40 yards to the quarterback. <laughs> He got in the league, hey. and we know what Sug did. <laughs> hey, TC, aka Mr. Ball, so hard university. And one of the best <laughs> intros ever. Terrell Sub, Ball, so hard university. <laughs> and he ain't lying, man. I 
I'm like, come on, bro. Like, come on, man. Let's be for real. And so, and going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. I'm like, bro, we we just need to like just watch the film. Sometimes I not not even sometimes. Most of the time, it just look. What what are you seeing? Right. You know what this guy is going to do. So, and it, it all matters what kind of team you got around them, especially if their confidence is high. Please put a team around them. So, just imagine if you put the players around them and they ball out, man, sky's the limit. So, it's going to be interesting, man. We're going to see how it go. But I know my team needs some of everything. We we need to try, we need to buy a whole nother stadium, but they talking about putting seventy five million into a stadium that's already rinky dinky, uh, flooding, got rats running around. I was like, bro, just tear it down, build another one. I'm just, uh, I don't know. They petitioning to change the name back now, ain't it? It's like, bro. I understand <laughs> how ever folks. I I'd say, hey. The crazy thing to me, bro, about the name is that the Native Americans was like the main ones. Like I guess they put a poll out. I think it was, I can't remember what it was. Was Washington Post, or New York Times, or something? And like the Native Americans were for the name. They didn't care. Right. It was like a high number for it. I think Dan Snyder, but at the same time, Dan Snyder could have been uh inflating them uh, numbers. I don't know. But from what it looked like, I'm like, they could have called ourselves the Red Wolves. I know it came down to that and the Red Wolves. I could have lived with Red Wolves. But the Commanders, and then it had a big old Wario logo. I mean, I'm just like, bro. Every time I say them, bro, I just, just say Washington. That, that just how I'm sick of it. Like, I'm tired of them, bro. I'm like, I am so tired of them. And new ownership, <laughs> better – they already making me hate them. At one point, I was like, "Yeah, man, we coming in here. We got new ownership. We got rid of Dan Snyder." But I see a lot of Dan Snyder stuff, <laughs> and that I'm not liking. But hey, wrong one built in, wrong one built in a day. So we'll see. But the good old NBA. Dun, 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 if you know, oh man, the best thing song ever. We, I just pray to God one day, one day we can get the NBA back on NBC. That would be the best thing ever. And bring back the thing song. That would be the greatest thing ever. But um, it's been a lot going on in the uh, league, making that playoff push. Who you got? Well. What do you guys think all the contenders and contenders and all that stuff? Because as of right now, I'm loving how the uh, Nuggets is playing. Um, the Suns are playing uh, good, but they uh, low key getting everybody uh, on the floor. Finally, Bradley Bill looking like he's uh, fully healthy now. And that's going to be big for them in the playoffs because if you got Bradley Bill as your third score, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. extremely dangerous. He's good. I'm not saying he's going to lead you to a championship as a one, but he can score as he's the number one guy. But he would be a perfect backup. But as a three, that is that that is scary. Milwaukee uh, playing good. Oh, and I love how uh, Doc get on a, a big old winning streak. I think it's up to seven or eight right now. I can't remember. But the media is just not talking about it. They want to just talk about his faults. I think that beats their narrative. But I just want to see uh, what y'all thoughts on the NBA right now. And yeah. since we leading into a uh, playoff time. Yeah, man. Yeah, the uh, Bucks' uh, win streak is six. Uh, and so, yeah, they've been balling, man. They just won last night against the Clippers uh, without Giannis and without Chris Middleton. And so, I mean, their defense is number one since the All-Star break. Um, and so the Bucks are – they're really playing really well right now. Giannis is out. Um, 
I didn't know until earlier, he's out with a Achilles tendonitis, um, his left Achilles. So that's a very dangerous injury. Obviously, torn Achilles, you know. So uh, hopefully, you know, they continue to be smart with Giannis and kind of gauge him day by day to see how his Achilles is doing. Because we all know what happened to Kevin Durant. He rushed back from Achilles injury in 2019, and that was it. Uh, so um, hopefully, you know, the Bucks are smarter with them. But at the East, man, I, 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 it's no one is the Celtics. They have separated themselves from pretty much to me anyone else in the East. It's the it's the Celtics, then the Bucks probably down here, and then everybody else, man. I mean, uh, they they have everything you can want. They got a point guard that play defense, give you assists and score. They got Jason Taylor. They got Jalen Brown. They got a seven three big man who can shoot from freaking thirty feet. They still got the veteran in Al Horford. Um, they got like Hauser, Peyton Pritchard. I mean, they have some just everything you could ask for on the offensive and defensive side. Um, and so I just don't see, to be honest, I mean, now a fully healthy books, the way they're playing now against the Celtics, that will go seven and they'll just be the best man win. That'll be the only toss up. But the Celtics play anybody else out the East, even Philadelphia, to me, that would be over with. Um, um, you know, Joel Embiid, he is going to come back, but even with Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, <clears throat> Tobias Harris, I don't think Philadelphia could really compete with the, uh, with the, with the Celtics. The best t- uh, chance they had was last year uh, when they had James Harden. But, you know, we saw how that turned out. Um, and then, again, they give you everything defensively. Um, and then as far as the West, definitely think the Denver – Denver is on top, but then it's the Clippers that are right there. And Denver, the Clippers are coming out the West. Um, and then, you know, teams like OKC, really good story to young uh, Minnesota, really good story again. And they have a little experience, but they're still too young. <laughs> uh, Love Cat, you know, Rudy Gobert, Anthony Edwards is looking like the next best thing in the NBA, the face of the NBA. They got Michael Conley. Uh, and, but they're just a little too young, and they haven't, um, you know, they, they haven't they haven't had as much experience as they need to yet to contend or be the team like the Denver Nuggets. Um, the Phoenix Suns is an interesting case. I think their downfall will be two things, not having a point guard and not playing defense. I think those two things will kind of hinder them. In the playoffs, you need somebody to facilitate. Devin Booker does what he can, but he's a shooting guard. He's a scorer, not a facilitator. Bradley Bill, same thing. He's a scorer. Obviously, KD is a scorer. Um, then, you know, Yusuf Nurkic is a nice piece. Um, he's their, their center down low. They got Josh Okogi as well, but he's more just a solo 3 and D guy. <laughs> and so, I don't really, I don't really see the, um, you know, I, I think the Suns definitely, they could make the Western Conference Finals. I don't see them going all the way because again they like that they like that point guard and they like that defense. Like the Denver Nuggets have a point guard and they're playing really good defense. Same thing with the Clippers. Um, and so, so yeah. And then like teams, teams at the bottom, the Mavericks, the Lakers, the Warriors. Um, Warriors is just too small. Knowing that from the beginning, <laughs> the Lakers uh, obviously are just a little bit to me uh, too old. Um, and D'Angelo Russell was balling. Uh, you know, LeBron's still going to do his thing. AD's still going to do his thing, but they have a hard time keeping up with these young teams. Um, and, you know, and so that's why it's like, I don't, the, as much experience as they have, the legend that they have and LeBron, all that kind of stuff, they just can't, to me, just keep up. Uh, the Mavericks, great point, great, great, Point point guards, two great point guards, but they don't have a three, and they were you know defense, you know just no nowhere to be found. A lot of nights, Luca got to put put up forty, um, and so you know I, I don't. I, the Mavericks are a good, another good story. They almost made the playoffs last year, and they'll probably make it this year. I think they'll actually be in there, but I don't see them going further in the second round because of no defense and not having a three, not having, you know wing guy, uh, and so. So, yeah, man, so that's, you know, pretty much in keeping up with the league. That's what I've been noticing. Um, and like I said, I think it just comes down to those two teams in the East, the Celtics and the Bucks, 
you know, some teams in the West, the Nuggets and the Clippers. So, um, I think I think if you look at the league right now, it's clear that Boston would be like tier one in the playoffs. If the playoffs started right now, they'd probably be tier one east or west. Um, but I like to look at history sometimes when it comes to seven game series, because I know that the regular season, NBA regular season and NBA playoffs is are are probably more different than any other regular season and playoff when it comes to uh teams. And Boston is a team I look at that while they're doing great right now, this is a, this this version of the Boston Celtics gets in the playoffs and they always come up short. I, I see them do that a lot. Um, I would, uh, if they can get over that hump, of course, they'll be champions. I think. I think they got the talent. They got the roster. Uh, and then you got probably up under them. I would say the Denver Nuggets, just because of the pedigree. This is a team that we know performs well in the playoffs. They're performing well right now. Um, their seeding may be a little different. I'm not sure how much time how many games are left in the season but in the west the separation between one and eight in the west is very thin um mm-hmm. yeah so like it could, it could be it could by the time the playoffs start it could it could have shuffled a lot um uh but they are playing well the clippers is another team i look at like boston you know they had a roster they, they they have amazing regular seasons, but they don't perform well in the playoffs. Uh, I think right in there was the Bucks, but then you got the Giannis thing with the injury. And uh, we talked about Doc Rivers coming aboard in the previous pod and wondering why it happened. Hey, this is an opportunity right here. If he can, if he can, I would think if they can get as much rest to Giannis as possible while maintaining a solid playoff seed. Um, and I think Doc Rivers is the kind of coach that can help with that. Um, man, they they can they can set up they can set up for an, a nice playoff run. Um, but like I said, that Achilles injury is some serious. Um, usually, when if they're soreness, I mean a tear is usually right around the corner. So they got to be very careful with that. Um, what else do I see? Uh, Cavs are playing well. Um, it's a, it's a team that a lot of people are sleeping on. Cavs are playing well. Minnesota's playing well. Um, and Minnesota, surprisingly, is one of the better defensive teams in the league. I mean, even outside of Goldberg, we know what he brings in rim protection. But, like, if you watch them play, Anthony Edwards and those boys, they're getting after it um, defensively. So, um like you said, the Knicks are probably just a bit too young. Oklahoma City, I would love to see them make a deep playoff run, but that that is a young team. Um, but I tell you what, the one thing about them is you're gonna have to beat them, and you're gonna have to beat them with uh, SGA putting up amazing numbers. Like you, know, you got to you got to overcome some great performances from this guy to beat this team. Um, I'm a Suns fan. Of course, uh, I would love to see us make a, a, a deep playoff run. I think we're poised to do it. Like I said, the separation in the West is not a lot at all. Um, we're probably like maybe four or five games from being a top three seed. Um, I think a lot of what hurts us is just continuity. Um, we've had a lot of injuries this year. Uh, it's very rare you've seen all three of those stars on the court at the same time. Uh, it looks like it's happening now. Uh, so we got a little bit of time to get it together for playoff basketball because all the experiment stops once the playoffs start. Um, and the lack of defense. Um, not that we don't play defense, it's just that we just don't have players that are known as defenders, um, particularly at the point guard. like. Uh, we have a hard time stopping the ball in transition, um, mm-hmm. just because we, you know, Bradley Beal is not a defender like that. Uh, a Kogi can defend; he's got the the length. But uh, of course, you know, Booker 
is out here trying to get buckets. He defense, y'all can handle that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Durant's got the same mentality, like, you know, give me the ball. Um, so that could come back to hurt us in the playoffs. Um let's see. I'm just trying mm-hmm. to think of any other teams. What's gonna be interesting though, mm-hmm. honestly, is the the play in tournament. Um as much mm-hmm. as I hate yeah. It's gonna be Starfield. You're gonna get your LeBron. You're gonna get your Steph Curry. You're gonna get your Kyrie's and your Lucas gonna be in there. Uh, Another wasteful you get thing. Jimmy, you're gonna get Jimmy Butler over there in it. You know what I mean? It's it's gonna be more stars in the playing tournament than the other and then and then in the other playoff matchups. To be honest with you, uh, it should be interesting, man. It's particularly that West race, how that how that plays out, man, and who ends up getting more home games in the West because it could it could be shuffled a lot. Uh, but yeah, that's about it, man. That I can think of. Yeah, in the playing tournament, that should. <laughs> Another thing that Adam Silver was just like, bro, what is this? Like, bro, you didn't earn your way into the playoffs. You can't get an AC, my guy, bro. Come on, bro. I think he did that because of COVID that year. Like, because yeah. all those teams had all no. the players out. So no. That's why he did. He just no. stuck around. No. Yeah. He, I remember LeBron hated the play in tournament. And then when they got in the play in tournament, he came out and said, like, yeah, yeah, this is good for the league. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> yeah, if I didn't hear mine. But, oh, well, my mom don't care. Yeah, for all that. But we, we pushing towards that, so can't wait for the uh, playoff. But let's talk about something. Top five shooters in NBA history. Yes, sir. We, we got to uh, – we're going to pretty much have a short show tonight, but we're going to have two top fives to end the show. And I think y'all will enjoy them. Top five shooters in NBA history. I'm going to go last just to see. Mm-hmm. I don't want nobody to say mine. But we're going to start with Josh, then Tess, then myself. Yes, sir. What you got um, for me, Josh? Yeah, I love this one, man. How about this? Start from five, work your way up to uh, one. Right on one. Bet, bet, bet. So, number five, got Kyle Corver. Kyle Corver. Kind of a journeyman towards the end. Of course, Atlanta Hawk, Chicago Bulls, so forth and so on. Number four, I have Reggie Miller. Number three, I have Clay Thompson. Number two, I have Ray Allen. And of course, Universal Number One, Wardell Stephen Curry. <laughs> Wardell <laughs> Junior. Yep, Junior. Yes, sir. Oh man! So, all yeah. right, starting from starting from number five. Uh, uh man, I, I I'm just gonna put it out there. I don't like my list. Oh. <laughs> uh, but number five, I got I got Larry Legend, man. I got Larry Bird. Uh, Great White Hope. <laughs> yeah, number four on that list, I've got uh, it's a, man, this is tough, but I got Clay Thompson at number four on that list. Uh, ahead of him, I got uh, Reggie Miller. Uh, I mean, turn on the tape. That's all you got to do. <laughs> turn on the tape. Uh, number two on my list, I got Ray Allen, man. To use a shuttle word, we already know. Um, and then number one on the list, I mean, do I even got to say it? <laughs> number yes. 30. I got number 30 out of Golden State. My <laughs> light skinned brethren. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Stephen Curry. Man, y'all list is terrible, man. What kind of list <laughs> is this? Oh, boy. I'm about to show you how a real list supposed to look like. At number five, I got Wesley Matthews. Number oh, four, I got Jason Terry. Number three, I got Bradley <laughs> Bill. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> I knew you was making this up. <laughs> uh, 
Wesley Matthews is not top five in any category. <laughs> 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 no, man, I've been struggling, man, with the five. We we pretty much got the same one. Everybody know who we got at one. So, cast out the bag with Steph Curry. But I'm trying to see who can be who can be uh, five. I will go with you know what? I'm going to go with my boy, Pager Stiakovich, man. Old Pager for the five. And then I'm going to go with... uh, I'm going to go with... See, this one, I want to... I put it like this. I I put Clay at four. And the reason why I want to say I want to put Clay at four, I want to put him at three. Because I said Clay is probably if if Clay is hot, Clay it's, it's just crap. don't miss. It's yeah, different yeah. than any other player <laughs> I have ever seen. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Any other player I have seen ever. Yeah. I have never seen nobody hot like that. Shout out to him breaking the mm-hmm. NBA record for most points in a quarter. That should tell you everything mm-hmm. you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Three dribbles. <laughs> Bro, the man scored, no, if I'm not mistaken, 60 some points of 13 dribbles. Yeah. Think about how hard that is. <laughs> Try to do, just score that many points <laughs> of 13 dribbles, bro. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, number three, <coughs> Reggie Miller, one of the best ever. Number two, Ray Ray, Jesus. What else you want to go? Hey man, the the best shooting form in NBA history. I don't think it's a better shot than his. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's a standard. It's like Ken Griffey swing, man. Swinging a baseball bat, man. It's top tier. And number one. Do we even got to say, man, future Hall of Famer, (laughs) unanimous MVP of the league, four-time champion, Stephen Curry, man. Anybody that doesn't put Stephen Curry number one is pretty much lying to themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It's just, it's almost laughable at this point if you don't put him up there. But... We pretty much got the same. Only thing that I heard change was like that five. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Kyle Corbett to me is a good I'm going to tell I you, think I you, struggle keeping Steve Nash. I don't know. I think, I think you're breaking up, man. What it is. Hear me? I think you. Yeah, I hear you. But okay, there you go. There you go. We good. Okay. Yeah, you good. Go I don't ahead. Know what happened? But I, sh- I struggle keeping Nash off this list, man. I struggle because you, you're talking about a player that's that's in the forty fifty. Can I tie him with Pages? Talking about shooting. Can can I? Yeah. Can I can I tie him with Pages? It's a tie with him and Pages. Yeah. Then you got to put Dirk. See, man, there's so many shooters, dog. Yeah, yeah, you start going there. down the rabbit hole, man. Of Mike man. Miller and, and Mark you, Price. You feel, feel, <laughs> you feel bad about leaving yeah, certain man. guys off the list, and it's just like, how did I leave? You can even throw Durant in there if you want to. That's what I I'm saying, man. man. <laughs> uh, it's all good, man. But shout out to those guys. Shout out to KD, Mark Price. Larry Legend, Dirk, Steve Nash, Kyle Corb, Kyle Corb, uh, Dame Lillard. Yeah, you could have put Dame up there, yeah. JJ Reddy, JJ Reddy, JJ Reddy. Um, it's so many guys, y'all. It's so many guys. Chauncey Billups, yeah. Paul Pierce, yeah. Billups, Paul Pierce. Legends, legends, 
Sean Lewis, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shooter, shooter. Hey, you can put Gilbert yeah, shooter. Like that. Remember Gilbert was putting zero. Agent zero. Oh, yeah. a lot of, he was there a lot of crazy stuff, stuff. <laughs> but hey, man, Agent zero, man, so many guys, man, so many guys. <laughs> but to end the show, ladies and gentlemen, we got, like I said, as promised, we got another top five. Top five sports. It's supposed to be movies <coughs> ever. Mm-hmm. Sports movies ever, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna go in the same order, and I feel so bad about my list because I'm leaving uh certain names off and I'm still mad. So I gotta hear you guys first. <laughs> oh, it bothered me, and I feel like I don't want to feel like I forgot something, but I know what's my number one. My number one, I didn't struggle with. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> go start from five and work it. Go to one. Oh yeah. I don't yeah, want yeah. to hit a one right now. Is this your order? Or you uh, just made five movies? It's my personal order. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Start from five and go. <clears throat> so for number five, uh, rem- remember the Titans with uh, Denzel Washington. Uh, number four, Creed, and really just all of the Creeds. Uh, with Michael mm-hmm. B. Jordan. I still ain't seen three yet. Um, number three, for my faith guy, Facing the Giants. Um, facing the Giants? Yeah, it was called Facing the Giants. Uh, it was with Mark, Mark Rick was in it, so you probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had no problem with Jordan, man. Jordan just got a problem <laughs> with Alabama fans. I don't yeah. like all Yeah. Number two for facing giants, my fault. Facing facing the giants, facing the giants. Is this like a real story? Um, not not necessarily. It it it, it's a it's a high school football movie. It came out in two thousand and six. Yeah. Yeah, I see it here. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. That clip where the coach is like yelling at his yeah. player, like Tim yeah. Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, number two for me is the blind side. Ooh. Oh, love the blind side until I figure out, you know, I found yeah, out. That I found out. Yeah, that's why Yeah, yeah. We found out some things about that. But I, I like to do that first. Um, and then of course, number one, I think is universal for us is uh Space Jam, Michael Jordan. <laughs> that that's a different uh top five, I can promise you that. But yeah. Maybe one of those moves is my number one. Or maybe it's not. Maybe you missed it. Uh-huh. We'll find out. Tez, what you got for me, man? Man, I'm telling you right now, I'm about to make a lot of people mad. <laughs> Ooh, long, as long as I don't hear hey. one movie on here, cause that was just garbage. It's um man, it's a, it, this is tough, man, because I love sports movies. And mm. some of the movies that I left off are gonna gonna haunt me, man. I'm telling you. Right, so if I go from five to one, and I want y'all to keep in mind I'm a little bit older than y'all too, so oh my list is gonna reflect that probably. All right, so at five, I've got little giants. <laughs> I got the little giants uh with uh Rick Moranis, uh Becky the Ice Box. Uh, it's just probably not one of those dramatic sports movies, but man, it's got some of my favorite sports scenes in it. Uh what movie you said, my fault? Little Giants. <laughs> oh yeah, man, little giants up there. Yeah. Little Giants. <laughs> Everybody started cheering. It's like they gave the yard. This <laughs> is hilarious. All right. Uh number four, I got Remember the Titans. I Me. Mean, if you watch that movie, you just it's a it's it's a it's certain movies that make you feel something. You watch that movie, like it makes you feel something, man. Right? It's um it's it's one of my favorites. Um, at number three, I got Friday Night Lights, man. 
I got Friday Night Lights, Booby Miles. Uh, Booby, Booby Miles, Miles under story, light, man. baby. It's God given. Shout out to Big Chris. What, what, what he said at the end, he's like, I write 38 toes for the state championship. I love all y'all, baby. That's one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> <laughs> That's I one probably, of my favorite scenes. Yeah, I probably uh, love the Carter team more after uh, what Carter lost. Oh yeah, 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 great documentary. Oh yeah, absolutely. They absolutely. they portrayed so badly in that movie in Friday Night Lights. Yeah, I, did. I was gonna put some documentaries in here too, but I was like, nah, I don't want to break the rules. Well, we we'll do documentaries <laughs> that we're probably doing this week. Probably doing this week. So I got two left, right? Or did I? No, I got one, two, three. You got two left. Yeah, yeah, two left. Yeah, the number two. Uh uh-uh. I got a butter rim. Mm-hmm. I, mean, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if it qualifies as sports movie, but but uh, it's yes, one of my that... favorite movies of all time, let alone sports movies. <laughs> uh, classic film. We all know what happened. Uh, in the number one movie, if you know me, you know number one sports movie for me is the program. If you haven't seen it, go see it. <laughs> uh, Omar Epps. Uh, man, Holly Berry's in there. Uh, it's one of the most accurate depictions of what college football life was like before this whole NIL stuff was going on. Uh, one of my favorite scenes from that movie is is when, uh, of course, there's a deleted scene when they were laying in the road in traffic, and they took that out of the movie. Um, one of my favorite scenes is uh, when uh the linebacker Alvin Mack he's they're talking about they go from like him studying and not knowing basic facts of history and stuff and just struggling in school and they showed him in the film room and every play they called out he was just reeling them off and it just showed like man these cats they may not be scholars in the classroom but if you give them a subject that they know if you can relate it to something they know Man, they kill it, man. Uh, again, if you haven't seen the program, look it up. It's probably free on YouTube. You can watch the whole movie. Go watch that. That's a classic. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in years. And that's ladies old. and gentlemen, and it is on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. So go check it out. <laughs> they do have the program, 1993 full movie. I just confirmed it is on YouTube. <laughs> and I will be watching that tonight. <laughs> but I after you said a movie, it reminded me of a movie that is one of my favorites. So I have an honorable mention. So I'm going to let y'all get, I don't think it's fair. I get an honorable mention. Y'all don't. So Josh, give me an honorable mention for you. <laughs> And I don't know why I really want to replace this one. That's all I want to do. But uh, Coach Carter, man. I mean, how can we be? Oh, my say? God, bro. Oh, no, that would be really worse, man. That would be really worse. Oh, <laughs> Coach worse. Carter, that's, that's legendary. Legendary in the black community. That's, that's tough. Bro, I, I, I am really mad. Now, I shouldn't know if gave y'all. Nah, nah. Oh, man. How did I forget Coach Carter, bro? I don't know, bro. This this is tough. Not oh, it man. is tough. I don't. This, okay, I, I I'll decide when it get to me. Here's what you got for me, man. That's making me uh, feel bad. If I got to do an honorable mention, man, I got to put because uh, I'm on my list. I didn't have it. I got to put any given Sunday on there. Uh, I was trying I not to say. It. Oh man. <laughs> Bro, oh you gotta my put god! Willie Beeman on there, man. <laughs> they call me Steaming. Willie Beeman, I keep the ladies screaming. <laughs> <laughs> bro, the crazy thing is, bro, like he did all this in like in a four week period. If you think about yeah. it, bro, all it was <laughs> just a four week period. Like, bro, you get all these endorsements, all that, all four weeks. Yeah, James played that role right there. 
I got another honorable mention, but I'm gonna let you go first, man. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna let Josh get another man. Come on, man. It's one movie, man. Because like I said, I'm older than y'all, so I gotta put it in there. Uh, I'll probably remember it. the Sandlot. <laughs> I don't feel bad because it's on my list. Spoiler. <laughs> y'all just need to get Good. your weight up. Good job. Yeah, you need to get your weight up. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, what you got for me before y'all start reeling off my moves? <laughs> yeah, so my uh, my other honorable mention, I kind of think about saying like saying like two, but but above that is definitely the longest yard. I'm saying another that. good movie. Mm-hmm. Money is hell too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> baby back, baby back. <laughs> he said, "What he man? I ain't gonna lie, man. Stone Cold made me hate him in that movie, bro. <laughs> I'm talking about, mm-hmm. and I love Stone Cold." He said, Look, Malcolm X. Now, what did he want to learn about a four high nigger? <laughs> Man, he said, Does the N word offend you, nigger? And I'm like, Dog, oh, bro. Why you got to be so mean, bro? <laughs> like, oh, bro. I'm like, I can't, I can't fight Stone Cold. Stone Cold kill me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, Man, for mine, I had I, I don't know who I'm this one is an honorable mention now. <laughs> honorable mention, white man can't jump. Mm. Classic <laughs> man. Well, one of my one of easily easily one of my favorite movies, bro. Wes Snipe, Woody Harrison, killing it. I haven't even watched a new one. I think it's pointless to even watch, but I'm gonna still watch it one day. I just couldn't name one movie out of this, so I just put the whole Rocky <laughs> series. The whole Rocky series. Except five. Hey, except five. Five five could have been a lot better. I like the idea of what he was trying to do with it, but it was just like, no, nah, you could have kept this. Five is like one of the ones. I'll just be like, no, nah, I'm straight. I think I'll stop right here. <laughs> um, for... Remember the Titans. Um, seven. He got game. Jesus showed us work. Jake showed us work. Shout out to Spike Lee, my favorite director of all time. I'm going to interview Spike Lee one day, and I am going to fan out when I interview him. I'm going to reel off these movies to him and I'm be like, hey, man, I know these things word for word. And the Malcolm X movie, we're going to probably talk about for an hour. I don't care. Shout out to Spike Lee. Saying a lot at two. Classic. Right, two, many, two many quotables that I still use to this day. Too many quotables. You're killing me, Smalls. Killing me forever, forever. <laughs> the great Bambino. <laughs> it's just so Bro. many, man. It's just classic <laughs> movies, it's classic. Man. Oh man, I mean, just like it's just the perfect childhood movie, bro. Nineties had some of the best movies, probably the best movies. Easily the golden era of. Um, any type of R&B, hip hop, best music era of any era. And I would die on that hill. (laughs) And number one, we're probably easily one of the best sports soundtracks ever. The GOAT of all GOATs, Space Jam. Yeah. The opening intro to Space Jam it, it, whatever one you want to start off. You can start off with I Believe I Can Fly where you see Michael Jordan out there just playing. Then he say, you get one more. Then out of nowhere when he about to go up and dunk it. Then the intro, boy, with the 69 boys. Ooh! <laughs> Damn! Slam, yeah, brother. brother. Come on, bro. Michael Jordan is the GOAT, bro. <laughs> like that, that alone makes you the GOAT right there, bro. Like that whole intro to start off a movie makes that jump hard, dog. So, 
And one movie I do have another uh, honorable mention. Oh my God, two of them just popped in my head, and it's by the same actor. Shout out to Will Ferrell. Talladega Nights is probably one of the most funniest sports movies yeah. ever, bro. That yeah, beat, bro. I didn't think about that for sports that movies, beat, but oh my God. Bro. Oh my God, bro. That dude had me laughing so hard in that movie. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this man, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my hands. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I don't know what's wrong with you. And Semi Pro, bro, Semi Pro was by far one of those movies. Dude had it on in the barber shop, and bro, I like, bro, you can't cut my head in this movie at all. <laughs> because I was just dying laughing, bro. I hate watching funny stuff in the barber shop, bro. I really do. But yeah, man, those yeah. are my honorable mentions. Man, it's so many, bro. Like that's what I'm saying, bro. It's so many. Bro. Uh, mm-hmm. Bro. Mm-hmm. Bro. So what else, man? It's, it's happy, just happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore, Happy Gilmore. Uh, Mighty Ducks. <laughs> yep, Mighty Bruh, Ducks. how the hell I forget? See the whole Mighty Ducks franchise by itself. The Flying V. <laughs> bro, and like, their kids want to play hockey, man. <laughs> Mo, bro, got black people watching that shit. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that what made me love hockey to this day. I don't watch it as much as I used to, but I still know it, bro. And I'm like, bro, it's crazy, bro. Like how that movie is just, oh my god, that, that's a classic. I leave loving basketball movie. didn't make it. Oh man, that's oh. I, I think loving basketball didn't really <laughs> age well. I think only because, bro, they used to play it on BET so much, bro. That was like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I remember, yeah. bro. It was like Dad and Soul playing, bro. I remember at one point, bro. Like you know how you just sitting down now, you just chilling at the house, like, bro. It's like eight o'clock, bro. That's they go to mm-hmm. play that love and basketball. I'm gonna play that Soul playing. Like my God, bro. There's other black movies to play. Mm-hmm. Give me anything. Mm-hmm. And it was like a stretch, bro. I'm like, bro. I hate it. I hated them so bad, bro. Have y'all mm-hmm. seen uh what's the movie uh with Kevin Costner? Draft Day, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. I seen yeah, pretty yeah. Yeah, but oh, it's yeah, a pretty yeah, good yeah. movie, man. It, it's a pretty good movie, but it's not it's not up there. No, nah, no, I wouldn't yeah, put it yeah, in my yeah. top, man. But it's a good watch though. Uh yeah. man, it's just so many, man, that you could you could pick from when you're talking about sports movie. Yeah, Air Bud. <laughs> oh like, my god like bro. Mike like <coughs> oh, Mike oh man bro see this is a hard see <laughs> all those are honorable mention bro because I'm like bro how, like how bro it, it like bro you can literally go on and on bad I news love bears. Uh, bad news bears water boy yeah, oh, water you. boy yeah heck yeah hoosers Mm-hmm. All right, what's the yeah. movie with Tom Cruise playing pitching for the the, Indian, the Indian? That wasn't Tom Cruise. That was a uh, oh my god, bro, Major uh, Leagues. Oh my god, Major you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't Tom Cruise. What's my boy name? That was a uh, Keanu Reeves. No, no that wasn't no Keanu Reeves, man. Oh my god. Before we get off here, huh? I'm about to get this, man. You, about to... you got it. You got it. You got to know. And Mr. Uh, 3000, too. Bernie Mac. Oh, Mr. 3000. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Thank you. Yeah. I don't Charlie know what Sheen. Saying, but... Shout out to Charlie Sheen, man. And Willie Mays hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga was fine, bro. My seat, bro. I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to get a Willie Mays Hayes jersey, and I'm going to be like, hey, bro, I'm fine, bro. You can see me with that Willie Mays Hayes jersey, bro. It's all with, dog. Man, y'all going to make me go back and watch some of these movies, man. Hey, for man. sure. You'll be in here watching movies for hours, boy. be like, dang, watch this. Damn, I got to watch this. Damn, I got to watch this. But, man, we definitely going to have um, – 
uh, a lot of folks on the show next week, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely appreciate y'all rocking with me. And my guys over here supporting me. Appreciate them for even coming up on the show as much. They just love coming up here. Hey. So, as always, everybody shout out their uh, Instagram and all that good stuff. And we going to get up out of here. We going to start with Ja and Tez and me. <coughs> yes, sir. Joshua Dennis, D-E-N-I-S, on all social media platforms. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Frodo imagery, all social media platforms, and courses. Hold on, see it right there. Yeah. Shout out to the home team today. I'm ahead of the day. B T double U. Sure, for sure, for sure. The high school I did not go to. <laughs> And the worst part yeah, about it, bro, bro, <laughs> my classmates, bro, it's like, bro, didn't you go to high school with them? I'm like, dude, you would have known if I went to high school with y'all, bro. What kind of stupid stuff is this? Yeah, like, bro, the closest thing I took at uh, BTW was the ACT twice, in which I got a quick story on that. The first time I took it, my mom made me – no, no, no. The first time – I took it. I actually studied. I got a 19 on it. I did a little bit of studying. That was the closest study, and I did the study. And then my mom was like, oh, you can pull it up high. You can see you one point away from the 20. Oh, what now? I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Whatever. And so she made me take it a second time. And of course, you can take it twice anyway. Man, I literally scribbled, just circled. Anything on that, I'm like, bro, I, I'm mad that I'm already in here on a Saturday. And you remember how long them ACT uh, you know. I think I was like four hours. But we, had, we took breaks in, in the middle. I was like, bro, I really didn't want to be there. Man, when them results came back, bro, I got a 22 wow. on that one. I said, and my mom said, you see, you see when you put, put your mind together, Prince, <laughs> you can go far. My mom still don't know to this day <laughs> that all I did was just circle stuff on the first one, bro. I was like, hey, I rolled with it, though. I said, I got 22. But, yeah, man, as always, I'm Brinson Shaw for the Shaw Shooters Podcast. Catch us every Wednesday. Keep subscribing to the channel. Shout out to the guys, everybody that came up on the show. Uh, the uh, Guys that started with me, uh, the Haven, uh, Arlon and Quint, they all not up here. Hopefully, we'll have all of them up here next week. Talking that mess should be a jam packed show next week, ladies and gentlemen. We have a big time interview coming up. Big, big, big time interview is coming up. Hopefully, uh, I drop it next week. I can uh, do it this week and drop it next week. So. Just be aware, be on the lookout for that. And uh, shout out to the city, the good old 46. If you don't know what 46 is, that's Tuskegee, Alabama, Macon County, where me and Ted like to call home. And just want to uh, give a shout out to my biggest supporter, my wife, and uh, shout out to uh, her family. Um, after the passing of uh grandpa uh this past this past week. So shout out to uh them praying for them as always. And my little one is about to become one year old, uh, the big one, and maybe my only one, how she keeps me entertained. <laughs> but as always, appreciate the support. And as always, F. Auburn and Roll Tide.